Greetings, dear friends. We gather again in our circle, continuing the rhythm of the group focus on the common good. In the current cycle, as we started working with the energies of Scorpio, the full moon, and continuing working with the energies of Sagittarius at this time of the new moon, we focus on the topic, imagining new systems for human societies, coming into right relationship with the Christ. Today, we continue our work of reflection and we'll offer to the group Chalice seeds for thought forms that we will magnetize through our meditation, radiating those to humanity. Thank you for joining the circle today. Over to you, Rebecca. So, as always, we remind ourselves of our dated and structured purpose in our work, in our project, um, which is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our work, our group meditation work, which aims to focus the power of our joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and Earth's overall planetary life, which aims to enable the recognition and the manifestation of spirit and spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity. and which aims to magnetize thought forms of solution that are spirit oriented and that support practical actions that lead to the advancement of humanity in accordance with the plan. So we've just come into the energy of Sagittarius so strongly with our recent new moon right at the beginning of the Sagittarian month and with our topic as Alexander said imagining new systems for human societies coming into right relationship with the Christ we're working within the fire element in Sagittarius on the mutable cross and we're using the mutable cross to explore topic areas related to harmonization and right relationships. So we've moved through the opportunities presented by the tests and trials of Scorpio. And we now connect with the aspirational arrows of Sagittarius, helping us to vision these new systems to try and feel our way towards them and dk tells us that sagittarius is a particularly human sign and it's connected in a definite manner with the appearance of our humanity on earth in sagittarius he tells us that intellect which has been developed, used, and finally illumined, becomes sensitive to still higher types of mental experience. There come flashes of light upon problems and a distant yet possible vision of attainment is seen. So 
So within these influences, we come together today as we seek to imagine new systems for human society, as we seek to connect in that imagining with the Christ impulse and the Christ in our hearts, beginning our group alignment through the naming circle, for which I'll hand over to you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance. As we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself. Say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. This is Alexander uh, calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Hello everyone, it's Rebecca. And as always, I'm on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Welcome. Jillian. Hello everyone, this is Jillian from the cold, wet coast in Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Alice. Hello everyone. I'm Alice from Lisbon in Portugal. Welcome. Aneta. Hello, this is Aneta from Soho in Denmark. Welcome. Bernard. Hello everyone, it's Bernard from France near Strasbourg. Welcome. Brigitte. Hello, this is Brigitte from Slaelse in Denmark. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, this is Darcy from Washington DC area, USA. Welcome. Eva. Eva might be having a problem with her microphone. Welcome, Eva. Helen. Hello. This is Helen. I'm calling in from a cold, wet Hertfordshire near London in England. Welcome. Jim. 
Hello, everybody. Jim Clark here, Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. Welcome. Show's up. Hello. Hello, everyone. Josette from uh, France. Welcome. Judy. Hello, everyone. This is Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Kathy. Aloha, everyone. This is uh, Kathy Heller from Pohoa, Hawaii. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, it's Lynn from um, the Columbus, Ohio area in the USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello, it's Martine from Belgium, Châtelet. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy. Let us hold in just a little bit longer of the silence and the alignment. For the last two weeks, we've been holding in the focus of our group meditation, the topic of the new systems for human societies that are in harmony, in right relationships with the Christ. We had opportunity to share our impressions at the quarter moon meeting and at the full moon meeting. And today we start, we continue our work with uh, sharing further impressions. And as we listen to each impression, share it into the group circle, we allow silence building up our group listening capacity to the higher note to the plan that seeks to be manifested and as we will come closer to the time to meditate we'll have another silence to formulate seeds that we will offer for magnetization and radiation through our meditation.
As we began our meditation uh, on this topic at the full moon, uh, Jillian led us uh, in the meditation when we aligned with the full moon energies, asking for group vision and guidance from above in our understanding of this topic and uh, Jill offered uh, us some questions that could help us to focus on this topic through the process through our process and uh, you can see these questions now on the screen uh, in support of continuing our conversation and i will put the link to the community impressions boards where we had opportunity to share uh, our thoughts and uh, different qu quotes uh, as we've been holding our topic in the focus and so now we open our floor if you would like to share, please unmute yourself, or if you're still muted by organizer, please uh, uh, raise your hand and we'll unmute you. If you all can be patient with me as I kind of try to unwrap my thoughts that I've had the last couple of days. Uh, this is Lynn. Um, it was sort of a different line than what we've been speaking about the last couple of months, a slightly different vision that seemed to be coming through, um, based though on a different way of, of, of doing politics and doing government um, um, based though on some of the things we talked about before, uh, some of the current educational trends. Um, um, I think it, it utilizes things that I already see in, in uh, um, kind of original simple forms, maybe being expanded upon and integrated um, for instance, the current educational trends um, in more progressive schools here in the U.S. are tending towards um, uh, being more individualistic in their assessment and um, encouragement of students, um, also being more holistic in their teaching styles, trying to teach to the whole person, including even some meditation sometimes. Um, that I think is is one one aspect I was considering. Another is the idea that media could really help us. Um, if I, I know there are programs that are occurring now um, where people try to to do a deeper analysis of uh, current events and political issues, um, and if that could be, um, if our thoughts could empower. Uh, people in media to not only do better analysis of problems, but continue uh, trying to give examples of solutions, of people and solutions that are making positive contributions, if that could be an important part of it. 
um, I think if you put those things together and other things, um, what I picture is um, groups arising, subjective groups, much as, as uh, the way we've arisen, but subjective groups um, that um, are more self-aware and self-realized that can I identify with uh, certain issues. And if they are given examples of um, things people are doing, they could certainly subjectively join in and uh, maybe actually in person join into some of these groups that are seeking solutions to, to particular problems. And if, if that happened, it would become more and more objective, I believe. And uh, what if um, these groups um, were rightly motivated and um, uh, people felt supported and rewarded for, being, for, for doing unselfish things and being part of these groups? Maybe these groups could sometime be recognized um, even by governments um, who struggle to solve so many specific problems. Maybe they could um, um, turn to these, these uh, groups to help them um, find solutions, um, sort of like lobbying only with right motive. And uh, if, if we all, and we could all be taking more responsibility for our world and feel more engaged in it, I think that would be uh, a wonderful trend, I guess you could say. And um, governments could maybe become more of um, coordinators. They could um, be coordinating various um, um, projects and so forth that are, are they're actually helping make, make the world a better place for everyone. Um, I think, also, I thought about um, how we can, the first, the first question, how do we become more spiritual people? How, how, do, how does humanity accomplish that? And one thing that I hadn't thought of before that came to me was um, by identifying with the actual nature of our planet and ourselves. And um, I think we do that, one way we do that is through awareness of spiritual principles as they express through natural laws, bringing together different levels of, of consciousness, more material and, and also higher consciousness. Um, and also um, as we become, as these groups or people became uh, built upon their awareness and um, their sense of responsibility. I think as we do that more and more and become more aware of our, our true self, um, we automatically touch into the eternal now, which makes the solutions we find uh, so, so much more effective and so much deeper and long lasting. Um, I think that's, that's what I have for now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I agree, Lynn. Um, and your point about recognizing uh, groups that are doing good things to help us along. Um, I don't know whether, it, I think it's global possibly, but uh, Prince William here is involved in a group and they choose from, uh, they narrow it down to get a small selection and choose a group that they think has done the most to help the climate action um, to combat climate change which yes it's a good idea that that sort of thing happens thank you hello everyone alice here i would like to share also some impressions um about question number one uh what what does the Christ expect from us? And I believe as Christ is love, I believe what humanity needs is 
right human relations, to learn how to apply right human relations in our daily lives between our brothers, with all the other kingdoms in nature, and also with Earth itself. So it all depends on how I see the other, not as the other, but as a part of myself. The way I treat others is the way I treat myself. So if I want to treat myself nice, I should be nice to others and be sympathetic and have compassion. So I believe it has all to do with the idea of separation. Let's eliminate this idea that I'm separated from my brothers and sisters, from my neighbors, from my friends, from everybody in the world. And even I'm apart from the planet where I live. And this leads us to question number two. If I'm part of the earth, I'm part of the problem and I can be part of the solution too. And to be part of the solution, um, I need to be aware how to improve my daily actions. And to improve my daily actions, probably I can start thinking every day. Do I need this as a personality? Do I need to have things? Do I need, do I need to take from the planet every day at every time? So probably I can start saying to myself every day, I don't need this or I can live without this. I'm the soul. Some things I need for my life as a personality, but do I need to extract so much as we do every day from our planet? Of course not. And those people who deny that climate change is in fact happening, I believe are those people who relate only to personality and have no soul contact or are much away from soul. And they only think as a personality, I can have, I can take. And probably I'm going to die even before the earth is destroyed. So who cares? And I believe all these three questions are, of course, related. I need to learn how to be the soul and the moment I understand that I'm the soul, I start acting some, a diff, in different ways. And yesterday, it was the 24th, and the group of Agni Yoga sends always a newsletter to meditate subjectively. And one of the sentences, um, one of the, um, from Infinity One, there was this beautiful, uh, text and I think it applies to this question with the development of straight knowledge and spirit understanding humanity will understand the significance of consciousness and the correlation of the subterranean and sub superterranean spheres so only as the soul and thinking as the soul will we be able to to care for the place where we live in and finally i believe in one body of government that will be probably the future because we are different peoples but we have common purposes and if we have one government that cares for all with food shelter health education and so on we can build sustainable cities, sustainable communities, and have a sustainable planet. And I believe also that if we implement the 17 Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations, it's a good way to start building a new, inclusive, and balanced type of government. 
I believe this is a way to start. So thank you so much. That's uh, quite uh, good because uh, I forgot to mention earlier on that last point. Um, I wonder if perhaps the United Nations will gain more power to do more good and if the Christ will be there etherically, I would imagine, to uh, run it with his with his masters and uh, the United Nations will actually be an overall government that will uh, overlook smaller governments in each nation. Thank you. Bernard, from the uh, third question about uh, one government, I uh, can observe that uh, each nation has uh, his uh, way soul, and uh, each nation has to offer a particular uh, gift for uh, all. Uh, the concert of all nations and uh, i uh, can uh, realize that uh, a government one government uh, must uh, integrate this uh, differentiation between the uh, soul nations thank you Hello, everybody. This is Darcy. In studying the questions offered for the group, uh, I was drawn to uh, the text externalization of the hierarchy as we draw near, especially to 2025. It speaks about um, beginning on page 644 that at the full moon the energies that are released for our use in service to humanity are the energy of love wisdom the energy of will or power the energy of active intelligence the energy which produces um, the seventh ray or power of divinity the energy of right human relations, and that these energies are um, used uh, for the objectives in the hierarchy uh, to help stimulate uh, the following three conditions, which will make the coming of Christ possible, and that will help um, with the remaining opposition, it says, of the forces of evil that are still active and must be overcome. And it is to prepare men's minds and hearts so that they may be ready for the influence of the avatar synthesis. And we know that the avatar synthesis was needed in a crisis situation in World War II and overshadows the General Assembly, we are told, of the United Nations. That avatar is still available. Um, to humanity. And it is actually uh, the avatars and syn uh, synthesis that influences, uh, his influence will spread through the work and activity of the Christ. And this synthesis is an uh, aspect of the will, the will to good. And uh, Christ himself will uh, weld this uh, energy and has been learning to work with this energy uh, it produces cohesion and a drawing together, and that will bring in and aid the task that our one sister brought forth, which is the immediate task of bringing an end to separateness. 
uh, that exists between man and family, community, and nations. And to also stimulate the aspiration in the hearts of humanity to be receptive to the good, the beautiful, the true. And so it will be increased. And as we work with the avatar of synthesis, um, we find that this at first uh, will bring about those conditions, and I believe we're seeing it, uh, where at first they appear very undesirable because of the measures that are being taken, um, these energies that we, we um, touch, assimilate, and distribute at the new moon will create the conditions where th those things will be risen up to be seen clearly. The other thing that I wanted to bring forth um, is that in the cycle of conferences during the climate change, we worked with the uh, phenomena are actually the thought form building of, of climate change. And um, it was brought forth uh, the awareness that indeed um, our emotional mental environment has become increasingly common over the last couple of decades. And acknowledging that mental and emotional conditions presuppose practical action and facilitate physical tendencies. So we worked with on one particular level where indeed um, humanity is directly responsible on one particular level for the emotional effects of climate conditions and worked um, with a thought form that um, dealt directly with the racial emotional effect of climate conditions and affirmed um, the understanding that heat and cold, as we understand the term, is a most peculiar manner are the result of the interplay of the pairs of opposites. Racial emotions affect climatic conditions, most truly make our climate in our significant sense. And we learn to focus on the form, quality, purpose, and cause in order to seed the field with a thought form of solution uh, that will help humanity in regards to climate change. So the um, right human relations uh, and bringing together um, uh, uh, that which is um, will be most conducive for the masses to receive and also prepare the field, the path for the uh, feet of the coming one. Thank you, everyone. Josette, I, uh, for the, the third and also little uh, the second question, I uh, think that uh, we should have uh, one government, uh, one government for the one planet, and a government uh, which uh, should be able to rule with the consciousness of unity unity of uh, Earth as uh, a living organism in respect of uh, nature and the law of nature. And in the same time, of course, the diversity and own characteristic and nature and way of living uh, according to the soul ways of its nation uh, should be respected. So uh, I think we we have to to learn to uh, to live and rule our lives and our governments and countries uh, according to the laws of a cosmos, like the one life that is uh, one in uh, diversity, and to be able to have the two 
in the same time together. And for the, the first question, I think the most important thing we have to, to do is a established right uh, human relationship. Otherwise, uh, nothing would be possible. Uh, right rela human relationship and the uh, principle of sharing, which are to, to be put together. Thank you. I think what just came to me was, um, in general, just the practice of harmlessness um, so that we can form these right relations, uh, practicing harmlessness on all levels, our thoughts, our emotions, our, our, our actions, uh, practicing harmlessness with ourselves, with others, and the planet. Um, I think by starting starting out, um, I think again, going back to the first question, um, as Christ surveys the, the earth today, what might be the first and most important thing he would want humanity to change in themselves? Um, I think the practice of harmlessness, because if we can learn to love ourselves deeply within, um, you know, selfless love, um, you know the practice of harmlessness i think would be one of the one of the keys to right relations because that's how we build a right relation with ship with ourselves to start with if we don't have that with ourselves we we have nothing so we have to start at that basic level and i think he would teach us that or would would want us to learn to love ourselves deeply um, you know, get rid of the glamour, you know, we're not pretty enough, we're not smart enough, we're not whatever, you know, we don't have enough, whatever it is, but to love um, the, the self, the deep self, and then practice harmlessness. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Judy. Um, I've been pondering this uh, quite a bit. I work with a group that uh, focuses on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the United Nations. So this has been a thought in my mind for uh, months and years even. And what stands out is that in order for right relations to happen on a global scale, there has to be ways for groups, countries to get together, basically to begin the communication to make that happen. Um, certainly the UN is one of those places. Uh, when you think of things like uh, COP27 and all of the climate discussions, while sometimes the uh, gains don't seem to be uh, big ones, uh, yet ideas when groups keep bringing them forth um, and the right timing, uh, in fact, make things happen. The idea of uh, countries taking responsibility for other countries who are affected by climate action, the idea of reparations, while it's not a new idea, it seems to be an idea whose time has come. So right sharing, right human relations happens there. I looked at the World Cup and the games and that was a world stage for Iran not to sing its national anthem in protest, for Germany to take a knee uh, just in terms of equality. It's really bringing uh, the world to a place of looking at groups working together uh, to bring their best foot forward. Uh, even now, just as uh, COP27 ends, there's a group that's working on limiting plastics. Uh, it's on a, 
a global level and they plan in two years to really make a big change in terms of reusing plastics, reuse, refill, uh, limiting single-use plastics, and they really see that they're going to be able to do this by 2024. Um, when you look at education, uh, the idea that if the world uh, has edu education uh, that they can access, then it really makes it better for everybody else. And uh, so things like um, the internet, satellites, uh, which are supporting Ukraine can support countries uh, that need internet service through phones and education can be shared. Uh, ideas, scientists getting together. So it's coming up with those systems uh, that basically support communications so that groups can uh, together collectively share their best ideas. And I, I do see it happening. And uh, if you look for examples in the world, uh, it is happening more and more. I resonate with what Judy shared. Um, and uh been mentioned several times uh, today it's about the importance of groups that emerge and uh, everywhere uh, around the world and start recognizing the higher purpose uh, for which they work along with other groups. And as that happens, connections emerge. And that network of light that we always visualize in, in our meditations becomes more and more uh, real and more uh, sophisticated in its connectivity and the image that uh, came to me in the last few days it's uh, that's in a way that's the process similar to what's happening inside of a human brain when where different neurons seek connection with each other and as every new neuron connection, neuron connection is formed, the overall capacity of the brain increases. And in a way through each of those connections between different groups working for the same purpose, we contribute into building up our collective, so to speak, brain, our all humanity brain. But that brain is that uh, collective cognitive uh, network, which makes us collectively more and more intelligent and aware and being able to respond to the need, therefore becoming responsible. Reflecting on the uh, on the on the topic, on the imagining the systems of human societies that support right relationships, create right relationship with the Christ and the, with the higher laws. Uh, It's interesting to remember that we live now in a time when both seventh and the fourth rays are coming into man, uh, active manifestation uh, in the cycle of manifestation. And therefore, 
the potency of the seventh ray uh, gives um, us tendency or gives us uh, opportunities to create systems. Uh, as, as we know, the seventh ray is a very systematic energy. And so when we talk about those different groups that connect with each other and individuals connecting with the groups, it's, it's those systems that allow communication flow and uh, cooperation and collaboration. And when the communication happens through, uh, that's when the um, opportunity for right relations stop, uh, start to emerge by when we talk to each other, when we listen to each other, that's uh, our human way to in a way tune into each other and therefore come to the right balance to the right uh, proportion to harmony and so that's uh, the first question uh, that Jill offered us what's that one thing that humanity should learn now uh, it's probably that how we create the systems that allow us to solve conflicts through leading it to harmony. Because the fourth ray is a basic array for humanity. That's our basic vibration. That's how we develop. That's how we evolve through conflict, through inner conflict, the outer conflict. We seek solutions. So for us, the task uh, now, for us collectively as humanity, the task is to learn to transform the conflicts, transform conflicts into through creative activity, through creative way of looking for ways to interact with each other to create harmony. I think that's so important that that quality of listening that Alexander's talking about um, as something that we need to be able to create these right human relations that we keep talking about. Um, and um, the, the question of the climate change deniers is um, very relevant to that how do how do you listen to people who you believe are denying a reality that that you believe in um, and i think the use of the terminology deniers really interrupts the possibility of listening to what people who question the narrative around climate change might be saying um, so this is a this is a really present example of um, how do you listen and how do you resolve a conflict in beliefs and viewpoints. Um, and so I think um, taking away um, terminologies that other people, that, that make them into others is really important making assumptions about their motivations and um, their, their approach to things based on our own viewpoints is really um, divisive as well. Um, so it, I think it's just a really good example of a very um, meaty problem um, and, and how, do we, how do we listen? How do we come to a viewpoint that's very different from our own? Um, because conflict isn't resolved by just saying, well, those people 
are either stupid or selfish or they they don't see the real point of things. Um, so I think that's a really relevant topic to our conversation. The other quality that um, I'm thinking about that could help us come closer to the Christ is, of course, love has been mentioned. And I think this quality of being able to rise above our our own opinions and listen is a very important part of being able to love. Um, but also I think love gives us the will and the capacity to do that, to actually go beyond ourselves. Um, but the other quality that came to me really strongly um, was gratitude when someone was speaking about, you know, how much do we need? What, why do we want everything? And do we need to take all of these things from the planet? And um, I think that um, if we can move into an attitude of um, really being grateful, um, and, and that's, that doesn't, that means on some deep level connecting with the things that we use and the things that we have and um, understanding how they help us and that people made them and that they've come from the earth and everything. I think that would be something that would really connect us more deeply with um, a loving approach to things and, and uh, a more um a, an atmosphere in ourselves and in our personalities and souls that would enable us to connect with the Christ impulse more. Um, I think that the consideration of the etheric um, would be very helpful to us. Um, um, and in regards to climate change, um, the for, for people who are aware of the etheric to try and deeply ponder and contemplate the etheric aspect of what is going on um, could be something that draws us away from um, some of the things that trap our thinking around this issue um, in, in a materialistic um, attitude. Um, and then the, the Agni Yoga um, quote that was mentioned, that seems really relevant too. And the thought, I don't have the words that were given, but I, the thought that came to me is this idea of going down and going up seems really important. Um, and the idea that we're thinking about um, all these technologies and the way the world is, is very focused on technologies. Um, that are strongly materially based and we've gone deeply into sub-nature with our, our use of electricity, these things that come from um, perhaps lower currents of energy and, and that we need to think about etheric technologies and how to rise up into higher levels that can only be accessed um, through um, a kind of human morality. Um, yeah, thank you. So appreciate what you brought forth, Rebecca, and our uh, other um, friends here. Uh, the cultivation that uh, Tracy was speaking about was harmlessness is also um, followed with uh, not only uh, first preceded by self forgetfulness and harmlessness and right speech and learning to cultivate that silence of a loving heart and the joy that brings strength so that we ourselves don't get pulled down by the wild and fearful talk or the hateful gossip or the cruel innuendos or suspicion because we are cautioned that it's very easy for us to get pulled into that so that we are to guard ourselves strenuously against this and say nothing which could inflame 
uh, hate or suspicion and being mindful even when we speak of our between ourselves as we're cultivating that loving heart and working within the group uh, uh, using um, uh, what Rebecca brought forth, uh, our own, the language that can eat, feed that field, uh, being aware of that. So um, the, the idea that the hierarchy of spiritual forces stands in spiritual being, remembering this, and second, that we can stand steady in spiritual being too. Third, that the silence of a loving heart should be our keynote. And fourth, the strength to stand is the result of a joyous attitude and a Uh, Darcy, I'm not sure if you finished your sharing. Uh, you suddenly went muted. If you would like to add anything, please unmute yourself. feels like we naturally came to this potency of the silence. So let us hold this silence for a few minutes. Recognizing the most resonant seats that's been shared into the group and If you have any of those to offer during the meditation into the chalice, uh, please do so when um, Jill today will be leading us in meditation, she will uh, call us to do that. Uh, but for now, let us enter this period of silence. What are the seed thoughts? seeds for thought forms that we would take with us into meditation today.
So let us now prepare for the meditation. Um, just one organizational suggestion is that the, when we will be voicing the seats, uh, please raise your hand and we will send you unmute request. That way we will be able to, to we will try to maintain the right reason for our meditative work by magnetizing those seats. Um, over to you, Jillian, and thank you for leading us today again. Thank you, and hello everyone again. Uh, alignment. Let us meditate together on our topic, knowing that we are not alone. We are joined subjectively by other members of our spiritual community and subtle members of the hierarchy who take an active interest in our work and guide us forward. As we align with the soul, hierarchy and the new group of world servers, let us say or follow the inv invocation of light. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. We visualize before us the glowing beauty of our chalice, which our work together feeds and fills. This golden chalice is made of numerous threads of lighted golden energy that we have provided as we have stood around in contemplation of our lighted thoughts. Today, our thoughts are of, sag are of Sagittarian energy and aim to concentrate on our next goal on the spiritual path. Sagittarius stimulates us to think of this next goal and to contemplate it. It also reminds us that there are more goals to follow as each one is reached. Meditation. We connect again with our topic for the month. Imagining new systems for human societies. Coming into right relationship 
with the Christ. We take a few moments in the silence to reflect on all that has been said and our responses. And as we do this, we allow seed thoughts that capture the essence of the threads from the conversation that are meaningful to us to crystallize. And with love, we offer our seeds into the chalice. We invite all who feel to offer a seed thought to do so, each one unmuting and speaking as they are moved to. We also honour those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seeds into the chalice. After each vocalised offering, we allow each seed to rest in the silence for a while before the next one comes. So anyone who wishes to offer a seed thought, please unmute yourself when you're asked to do so. new intelligent infrastructure of communication between groups all around the world is emerging increasing collective capacity for conflict resolution
difference in oneness. I see the golden threads in the chalice showing us the way to etheric vision, showing us the threads that link us all together as humanity and that link us to a hierarchy and the other kingdoms of our earth. I see this showing us how we do share all the time. And we can learn to see the truth of cause and effect. And this etheric vision will help us to understand what we need to do. Help us to learn. Us to learn. <laughs> Visualizing the emergence of politics of goodwill for which we are all responsible contributors. The creative intelligence of humanity can be nurtured through systems of communication that allow groups to come together to work for the common good. Our spiritual goal is establishing of the kingdom of God. We prepare men's minds to accept the fact of the reappearance of the Christ. We actively work to bring order out of chaos. We tell them there is a plan. Hierarchy stands that God is love, the hierarchy is love, and that Christ is coming because he loves humanity. The 
speak the truth within or behind the illusions. Cultivating the capacity for etheric perception. Learning to listen with an open heart. Learning to love that which will carry us higher. Learning to think deeply transcending worldly narratives and discourses, fashioning knowledge from the forces of the intellect, then transforming it into spirit wisdom. New systems of human societies open to infinite possibilities and solutions as they are rooted in selfless motivation, harmlessness, relevance, and integrity. This brings into alignment right relationships with each other and the Christ. Uh, if anyone else has uh, anything to say, stop me now. I will just uh, put my thought in, which is uh, that may the UN maintain its high spiritual values and gain more influence in the world to help bring peace. So if anyone else would like to say anything, um, I'll just leave a few minutes and then I'll carry on. Distribution. We gather the seeds together in the chalice and allow them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing light of the group vessel. We see the resonance of our combined seeds filling the chalice and vitalizing its radiant light, 
enhancing the beauty and wisdom of its tone as it flows forth into the world, expressing on the mental, astral and etheric planes, radiating to all receptive hearts and minds. closing and as we seal our work together through this meditation we sound the great invocation from the point of light within the mind of god let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth From the point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Om. Om. Thank you.